Hey, everybody. Happy Wednesday. This is your host, Adam Mason, with the Bearded Talk podcast. This is one of our most fun episodes I've done in a long time. You can just tell when we're chatting back and forth with the guest uh, how relational we are and just their heart and their honesty. And so today we're talking to Kent Heckle, a.k.a. Kentristing, a.k.a. Kentristing 2, a.k.a. Who's that guy hanging out with Natalie Frank at HoneyBook? He's the man. Uh, he has such a fun story of kind of like hustle and grinding. He's only 22 years old and I love his passion for social media and just chasing the next thing. And similar to me, just got out of a small town and was like, no, I want to see what's bigger. What, what could I do? And so I love the opportunity that he has pursued. And then he kind of tells a story of losing everything. And we'll get into that during the episode. And I'd love to see where he's going to head in 2019. It's really cool. Really great episode for you guys. And we're going to leave you with some social media tips because that is his specialty. He's the man at content social media. So without any further ado, here's Ken Heckle. Kent, how's it going, man? It's going great, Adam. How are you? Good. I'm just uh, enjoying some snow right now. I know this is obviously not a, uh, a live podcast, but it's snowing right now. And hopefully when people listen to this, it's not snowing or it's like full of snow. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a big proponent of the snow. I love it. Yeah, I'm a big fan too. Like growing up on the East Coast, um, mm. you know, it's just like we winters would be hit or miss. So sometimes we'd have tons of snow and be like, yes, this is freaking awesome. And then sometimes we just get like a dusting and we'd be reminded that we don't live in like Minnesota or something. Exactly. It just kind of fakes you out sometimes. And I hate that, but yeah. it's real today. It's real. <laughs> right. Schools exactly. are canceled. We're very committed people and we like commitment even from Mother Nature. We're like, yes. we, need to, we need you to commit <laughs> to this. I love it, man. So, dude, I, uh, I've been following you for a long time and we chatted. We got to meet a few weeks ago and finally i know right like it's been too long right exactly we have all these digital friends and mm -hmm. honestly we wish them they we wish that they were our real friends and then we have yep. real friends that wish that they could combine with our digital circles um yep. and so it's good when those things happen but um we, we i met you and we were like okay cool yeah and i had been following your social media i've been following the youtube channel and i found about you through like many people through natalie frank and honeybook yeah and we'll get to that but um I went to catch up. I was like, oh, I don't think I, I, what has Kent been doing? I haven't seen any social media <laughs> from him. And that's part of why we're doing this episode. And so I, I went to go watch yes. your latest video and learned about everything that had happened. And so uh, before we get into that, tell me a little bit about you. Like, where are you from? Where did you, yeah. you're, you've done a little bit of social media, but you're a content creator as well. Like, give me the, the Kent Heckle rundown. Yeah, for sure. So I grew up uh, just outside Annapolis, Maryland. Um, and I, you know, in high school, I played a lot of sports or at least my first two years of high school. Um, and then I broke my arm, my sophomore year of high school and decided, okay, I can't play sports anymore because there's no way I can catch up to these kids that are getting better and better. So I'm going to focus on something else. And for some reason, my mom put a camera in my hand and was like, just start making videos, see what this could do. I was like, okay, mom. So I was watching YouTube a lot. I really enjoyed the internet world. And I started making videos and I started posting them. My senior year of high school is just like a, a kind of form of self-expression. This is what I did after school. A lot of kids would go to sports practice. A lot of kids would go to music practice. I would come home and I would just make videos. It was just something I enjoyed to do. So then I went to college and in college, my school really helped me out and were like, hey, why don't you focus on making internet videos and see what that could be like. So my teachers would take my classes and make them relevant toward YouTube. So instead of my class writing a paper about the history of the newspaper industry, I would focus on the history of advertising on YouTube and learning how to create more intentional content about that. And then my junior year, my college was like, hey, for your major, which was a mass communications major with a focus on YouTube, they're like, hey, we need you to get an internship. And I was like, okay, mm -hmm can I just work for myself? <laughs> I want to keep making my own videos. Right, right. And I was generating a lot of revenue. I had done um, a couple brand deals with Microsoft and bigger companies like Snyder's of Hanover. And I feel like I was actually running a legitimate business and it was really awesome. Um, but my school was like, no, you definitely can't work for yourself. And I was like, what if I hire someone and I work for that person? And they're like, nope, that's still the same thing. Can't do that. Um, and they're like, but here, we have this potential internship for you. 
uh, at a at a winery just down the road. And I went to a tiny school, 500 kids outside St. Louis, Missouri. And so this winery was like 45 minutes from anything. They got you know, not many visitors per year. And I was like, I want to do social media. And I, I get that that's a huge part of it, but I want to be in like a city. I want to be moving, hustling, grinding, doing my thing. Um, and so I sent a DM to Natalie Frank, who we had known each other from the Rising Tide Society. I just heard about her because she's from my area as well. And I was like, hey, a long time ago, you asked me if I could make your vlog someday. And I know we were kidding, but like, I need an internship. Do you think we can make it happen? And fast forward like two months, I'd flown out to San Francisco and was making Natalie Frank's daily vlog. And my school was like, yeah, this works. This is a cool internship. And so it'd been a couple weeks and I was doing this internship. I was all over the country. We were back and forth from Maryland, San Francisco. We were in the middle. Sometimes we were just all over. And I hadn't done a single homework assignment for my internship. Um, <laughs> Honeybook was the company I was working for, which is very common in the creative industry they were just like, hey, can we just hire you full time to make all of our videos? And I was like, you know what? Call my parents. I was like, hey guys, let's talk about this. And they're like, Kent, just do it. This is a better opportunity than anything we saw coming. We had no idea what direction life was going to take you. And so I did it. I took it, took the job. And it was amazing. I was creating content for them, creating all their videos, doing all kinds of fun stuff. I was really happy. Um, but I kind of slowly started to realize that living in a city and living this hustle lifestyle isn't exactly perfect for me. And I was still creating my own content on the side. I was like really involved in these online communities and I was starting to help other businesses and startups and companies with video or social media help. And I was like, you know what, maybe I could do this on my own. And then some mental health stuff really started to happen. And I realized what I needed to do to make me happy. So I decided to leave that job at HoneyBook, came back to Annapolis, Maryland, started my own social media consulting company and did that for a couple months. And then this is where the story I think takes a really interesting turn. <laughs> Before we kind of, uh, yes, this is like, I was going to wait for you. <laughs> if, if podcast had clickbait. Um, yeah, so in addition to everything you just said, this mm -hmm. is one of the things that I learned about you and you can kind of describe as much as you would yeah. like about this was, uh, and this is, I'm mostly just interested from a, what the this is kind of like the the fight club nobody talks about it of course. um you also you know usernames are everything and so just social media managers in general naturally you know like i have a friend of mine who works for a big newspaper in in dc and like he can literally call an instagram person and say hey we need to be verified or we need this person verified and it's very easy yep. um but for folks who are just a little bit under that, you know, like you might not have the reputation that somebody that he's he's kind of relying on the organization's rep um how, you know, I've heard you used to do like selling and kind of managing different Instagram accounts. You also just yeah. started Instagram accounts when lots of really cool names were available. Exactly uh, right. yeah. so, so tell me a little bit about that because people are just curious and like, what was life like? Because you go to start a new Instagram handle today and you're like, I have to add numbers to this. Like there's yep. nothing available <laughs> that is cool, you know, uh, yeah. and the person who has my, the one that I want doesn't use it and I can't contact them and I hate this. Um, yeah. So tell me a little bit about that real quick. Yeah. So that world was really interesting. That was really how I supported myself through college was actually buying and selling Instagram usernames, which is crazy, right? Like, so I was in a movie um, about my YouTube stuff called internet kids and Facebook reached out to me and they're like, Hey, we'd love to do some promotion with you. We'd love to test some beta features on you. Can we put you in this Facebook group and like, you know, start a relationship and us work together. And I was like, of course, I mean, Facebook, I'll do whatever you want. So I was like, <laughs> beta tested their live streaming when that was really first coming out on Facebook, not Instagram, Facebook live streaming. So was beta testing that they put me in this Facebook group and this Facebook group had everyone in it. I mean like the biggest on the internet, like Casey Neistat and Tyler Oakley and then the biggest in the celebrity world, like the rock and Kevin Hart. And I'm sure that these were like their managers accounts or whatever, but like, it was kind of crazy. They would post an update to us like once or twice a week. And it would say, these are all the features that are coming out. This is everything that, um, we're talking about and thinking about, and we wanted you guys to be involved in it. And so I ended up making really good friends with these people. And for months I would just nurture these relationships to a point where they started asking me like, Hey, how can we help you back? You've been so grateful or great to us. And I was like, well, Hey, could you grab me a username? And they're like, of course. And I was like, well, you, could you also verify my account? And they're like, of course. So I kind of made that connection and started to get as many usernames as I could. And I, you know, silly Kent would just flip them on the back end, but yeah, like it came usernames like at photo, at hip hop, at creative, at kitchen, at houses, at kittens, at 
I don't know, all kinds of stuff. I had like 25 at one point. What in the world? And were yeah. these, you know, and this is like part of the, the culture, were they just not being used and they reserved them or were they being used or they were like, there's an so, algorithm that determines yeah, it? None of them were being used, the, the ones that I got. Um, yeah. I got all mine lawfully, like Instagram, like turned them over to me. They're like, yes, Kent, these are your usernames and they switched the emails on them. So they were like my accounts, which is really, really cool. Um, technically I could still go back and claim any of them I wanted, but um, you know, we'll get there. Um, but yeah, so they would just like reach out and, and just give me the username. It was kind of crazy, but yeah, it was like, um, sorry, I'm totally blanked on the question. I'm all over the place today. <laughs> so just uh, that you grabbed these, uh, these usernames yes, like lawfully sorry. and they weren't being used or anything like that. They were all inactive for multiple years. So I would find usernames that were two years and older that hadn't been used, hadn't been posted on, hadn't liked anything. I had ways of telling. Um, I like built analytics tools so I could see when an account was doing something like interacting with the platform mm. and I would find usernames that weren't being used and that's how I would grab them. I would just email, Hey, this the username hasn't been used in two years. Can you swap it to my account where I would create an account at photo six, seven, nine and would post 30 times. So it was like, you know, I'm using this account trying to grow my photography or whatever. And they'd be like, Oh yeah, of course. And we'll just switch this username to it. And so that's how at photo came to be. And uh, same thing with all of them. I love it. I love it, man. That yeah. is so freaking fascinating. That's that's the fight club that nobody knows. Is no, there a, yeah, and go ahead. I was just going to say, is there the same kind of market for you know Twitter usernames or not as much? I would say not as much, but absolutely still. Snapchat usernames, I mean, it goes all the way down to like Minecraft usernames. <laughs> um, like it really is a crazy world that we live in where like those kinds of things are for sale and people get hacked all the time. There's a really interesting reply all podcast. If you guys are interested in that topic, all about people who steal the usernames to sell them. And that's now the part that I participated in. And that's the part that I really despised of this community that like it, it became toxic. If, if I'm honest to use that word sure. um, where people would steal the usernames and then sell them from there and then rip people off and, you know, take them back. And it was just so messy. Hmm. Um, that that's when I really started to take a step back and be like, I don't appreciate being a part of this because I would get these usernames and I wouldn't just sell it to Joe Schmo. I would work with like a, a legit company or I would work right. with like a very serious entrepreneur who's really looking to build. Like I sold usernames to Gary V's companies. I sold usernames to like record labels. Like that was my intention. I was trying to make legitimate business contacts through this and business deals instead of just like steal at lizards from the, the example from Reply All is say someone stole the username on Snapchat, like at Lizard, and then mm. sold it to someone else for $100 and they tried to steal it back and then it became this huge web. It's very fascinating. But like, I hated that. I couldn't yeah. believe that that was a part of my same world. So I really stepped back and stopped, if I'm honest. Yeah. It seems too, it's it's almost like um, you were like flipping usernames, like, oh, I bought all these usernames or acquired these usernames that weren't being active and they weren't benefiting the community. They were stale, you know, exactly. like nobody, you forget all the accounts that you follow that aren't posting content. And then you're like, how am I following a thousand people, you know, or whatever. Right. Exactly you're like, right. Oh, exactly you're like, right. oh, these are stale. Whereas like ESPN, they're posting 15 times a day as part of their mm -hmm. strategy. And you're like, oh, well, duh, I follow ESPN. You know, or duh, I follow SportsCenter or whatever. Right, right. Um, and it's kind of like a different mindset for them versus like stealing an account is totally different. So, um, yeah, I mean, we, you're basically just like flipping handles. I think that's totally fine. Uh, right. I mean, and it was it was how I paid for everything, like how I got through college, how I paid for my honeymoon, how I did all kinds of stuff. That's so cool. I love that, yeah. man. That is awesome. Now, I mean, if uh, if she's listening, we just need or if any of them are, we need a Kardashian handle that we could buy and sell, you know, or that we. Could oh, just, yeah. Oh, those get, are the good ones, man. Get, let me tell you. Yeah. Any rappers, <laughs> all that, like fan pages of those blow up like Young Thug. Do you ever yeah. heard of Young Thug? Uh -huh. his, yep. his fake Instagram is almost as popular as his main one. Someone made a fan account of Young Thug and got the actual username Young Thug. And he's a, like the username at Young Thug instead of his actual username is almost as popular as his main account. It's insane. Like, I love that. I love that. And it's well, monetized. Like these people are making money off of this. So it's yeah. just madness. Well, it's like um, I read a report the other day that the the famous egg that was started the other day, mm -hmm. uh, like one, it got verified. And then yep. two, they think that the first ad that that account is going to sell is going to be at least over a million dollars just because of the yep. influence it has. So yeah, I, I bet. Like, 
I was do like, you have, oh. have you heard any rumors about who it is and things like that? No, no. With the, oh man, this is totally not what we went to on this podcast to talk I know, about. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love it, but we'll talk about that after the show. But let's, let's. Um, so you're building all these things like social media content creation is your life. You're you're helping both Honeybook, Natalie Frank. You've got some other clients going. Mm-hmm. You're you're very involved in the like technical of what's happening right. and you're hyper aware and then you're also just creating your own content as well one for fun exercise too just to build your own handle yeah uh, i always think it looks weird when i meet social media managers and they manage big accounts but their personal social media is really tiny and yeah. it's not a diss but it's also like it just feels weird and it's nice when you're like your own social proof is there as well um yes, so you've exactly. got everything building you're you're making this happen and two you just got married like all these are happening. And then the last video I watched of your YouTube channel was that you had lost everything. So tell yes. me about that. Like what, like everything died. <laughs> it, very literally. Yeah. And I'm really happy that I can laugh about it because it was a huge mindset switch for me. But yeah, I woke up one morning and everything had been deleted. I was on a 30 day break from social media. I had taken the month of the December off to be like, Hey, this has been my life for the past like four years. I haven't done anything but look at it all day, every day. I need a, I need a break. I need to stop. And I did. Felt awesome. I was really happy. And the like one of the last days, the 26th, so four more days or whatever, um, someone, some hacker had hacked into my account and broken terms of service, meaning we are not really sure what they did, but we're pretty sure they sent out a bunch of malicious DMs. They might have posted some things and then deleted them. They changed my usernames. They would swapped everything around and Instagram flagged that as bad and just removed all of the accounts associated with my IP and then the hacker's IP as well. So basically I lost like 15 accounts across multiple platforms and 200,000 plus followers. And it was like pretty devastating. (laughs) And my verification check like to just get really analytical about all the things. Like it was like really tough and all my direct messages with all these people that I made connections with, like had like not to, not to flex like this, but like had a lot of like celebrity clients that I was working with and like really big people that were going to build me up. And it's like, it's really hard to just one day wake up and just be like, well, nope, not anymore. Mm. And yeah, like it was my reality. It became too real really quick. And in that moment I kind of had to decide like, is this, the worst thing that's ever happened to me or is this my moment to be like, okay, what's next? What am I doing now? And I chose the latter, but it's not been easy. (laughs) Yeah. So quantify with me, you know, obviously there are special accounts and things that follow you and stuff like that. But like what, how much did you lose? Was it only a few, like, was it only Instagram accounts or like, was everything affected? Like how, how did that all work? Um, so Facebook and Instagram, I lost all the accounts on there. So I think it was about like 15 accounts, I think across all my platforms. And this was even like, you know, my big accounts like at photo, which had 180 K and my main Instagram account, which was verified that had like 11 K or something like that. And it was also like my random one-off accounts. I had this fun account I was doing called uh, Louis Vuitton moms, where I would post photos of <laughs> people with Louis Vuitton bags in weird places like Costco. And I was just like, what are you doing? You know? Yeah. <laughs> being silly. And like those got taken and it was, yeah, it was like a pretty huge amount of my social presence. And so I was left with Twitter and my main YouTube account. Um, so that was, I, I don't really know the exact amount of followers on those, but it was a, a pretty big hit because my main presence had shifted to Instagram. That was where mm-hmm. almost all of my business came from as a social media consultant. It was almost where almost all my content was going because that was where my highest engagement was. I like, I prided myself. I had about 11,000 Instagram followers. It was getting like anywhere from two to 3000 likes a photo. That's insane. So, you know, I mean the, the actual loss of it was pretty serious, but I think uh, it, it is tough. Like it's, you know, a tough thing to reflect on. <laughs> right. No, totally. I mean, the, the, just the, like the fallout. Now, did you, the few clients that you had that you were managing mm-hmm. social media for, did you, at the time, were they supportive? Did they, did they find out? Did you tell them? Did, did you lose them? Like what, what was that process well, like? Luckily, one of the things that I don't do is log into my client's accounts. I don't really like my role was a very consultant role where I would provide a lot of advice and strategy and growth opportunities and be like, Hey, do this, do that, do that. Because most of the companies I would work with had a social media manager or most of the influencers I'd work with, they had people. So I was working with those teams. 
Um, and I was just providing like assets and things like that. So a lot of my clients, they weren't worried that they were at risk or anything like that. And I'm not public about who my clients were, but it did. They like a lot of them called me and I told them, explained the whole story before they even were able to approach me about it. And I was like, Hey, this is something that happened. Just want to make sure you're aware. And they're like, most of them were like, Hey, we hired you for your brain, not for your presence. So we're Mm -hmm. cool. But it did really affect me because I wasn't able to take the next step. A lot of my contracts were short-term contracts because I'm young. I'm 22. I just started a new business. I don't know how to do it perfectly. And so my contracts were short and I realized the not wonderful benefits of that of like, well, if all my business generation and my lead generation is now gone, I need to find a way to supplement that immediately to carry on. And I still haven't quite figured out how to do that. (laughs) Mm. Is your wife uh, like a trust fund baby or she's like married to an oligarch or something like that. So she can, she can help. (laughs) I wish man, let me tell you, no, (laughs) we're, we're doing all right. We're, we're very focused and we're very like driven people. So we're able to carry on and figure this out. And I'm taking some time to like really dive into what it is that I want to do in life. Cause like maybe that's the opportunity. Maybe the opportunity is, you know, okay, all my social media is gone. What do I want? Either what is the perfect thing for me to build? What is the perfect influencer look like in my eyes? Or what what do I want to do? Do I want to go live in New Hampshire and make maple syrup? Maybe I'm going to go try it. <laughs> Let's go, dude. I'm in. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I really took this as an opportunity to just kind of go big picture on my life and be like, what is it that I want to do? Mm, that's good, man. A lot of people don't get that time. And obviously, mm. it, it sucks to lose everything. Um right. Do you know, I know the, the one big account you had was photo and obviously most people listen to this are photographers like, what, does that account do anything or is it just gone? Like, have you talked to anybody that's like from Instagram and what that, what that even means? Yeah. So I talked to Instagram about it and I've reached out. So first off, their support is terrible. If anything ever happens to you, I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I really am of the mindset now that like they just own social media, Facebook and Instagram. And if something happens, there's no competition. So you just have to create a new profile. Like, yeah why would they help you? Like you're, I don't know. I realized like my 10,000 followers, even though I was verified, it, it didn't matter to them. They have billions of users, like whatever. So I was able to end up reach out, get in contact with them. And they're like, Hey, we're so sorry. we like totally believe you all this, whatever. But because we can't prove that the things that happened were a hacker, like mm. there's no proof that it could have like it could have been me, but obviously why would I do that? But they like, there's no proof we can't do anything because our, like our bots on our side flag malicious activity and just remove the accounts. It's Mm. just gone. Yeah. Um, And so that was the explanation I got, even though there's tons of people like, Oh, they just should have turned it back over because it was a hack situation, but it's just, yeah, is what it is. And I was upset about it, but I realized the more I just kind of, drag on it, the harder this whole process will be for me. So I just decided to move on. Mm. Man, that's crazy. I actually had a, so one of my fun, like toy accounts that I have been messing around with. And I, obviously I haven't even gone public with it yet. So it has mm-hmm. zero content. It's just an idea that I've been like working on forever. Yeah. And that got hacked um, randomly. Cause I, I got the email and it's like, Hey, uh, Instagram says you've been having trouble logging in. And, mm-hmm. and I literally, for some odd reason, I, now I look at every single email they send me and I'm like, oh, whatever. I mean, I haven't even logged into that account in a while. Like, I'm sure it's fine. Yeah. And then w- one day I went to go log in and it's like, hey, and I, w- I had it on my phone. So I had the account in there and um, it would not let me do it. And I was like, oh, crap. And it totally turned into this like spammy. It was a Russian bot, I, yep. I assume, because it was yep. a Russian email. And I was just like, what in the world? And so I was like, all right, well... I'm going to go see if I can make this happen and see if I can get this back. And so like sent all the information over, tried to, like you said, the support is so rough, like trying to find where it is. And I eventually found like a Reddit thread that had like a link to the support page and I was like, all right, cool. And luckily, I mean, I, I feel lucky. Like I got it back somehow. Yeah. Uh, and what's even weird, what's sad is that it had no content on it, uh, at least for me. And so to, for me to get it back, it was really weird. But she had sent, uh, she or the robot, had, had sent a ton of like really bad DMs and all this stuff. And luckily it was not related to me. Like nobody, I'd never like followed any of my own accounts or anything like that. But right. um, it's such a weird situation. It literally is like Wild Wild West. So it's exactly right. It's exactly what it is. It's like, 
there's just kind of no rules and everything is just going to happen. So, <laughs> yeah, that yep. is tough, man. Um, so switching gears now talking, yeah. you're working on your own thing. You're taking time to reflect and you're, you're building stuff up. Yeah. What, what is, you know, for people, photographer, there is, there seems to be, if I can get over my stumbling words right now, yeah, do you, do you? there seems to be, there's folks on social media who are not inherently content creators and mm-hmm. that's totally fine, right? They're maybe, of course. they're yeah. like, I know a girl, a friend that I follow in DC and she is a uh, cycling coach for Soul Cycle, and she's great. She's killing it. Like she's got a hundred thousand followers. Her primary skill set, you know, right, is obviously cycling, right? That's her yeah. number one thing. Like she's good at that, good at coaching, good at fitness, all those things. And she, um, you know, but she has a huge channel. She does a lot of like influencer content, stuff like that. Um, like, she's not primarily a content creator. So she has one, she's tried to learn how to create it herself. You know, she's learned like how to edit photos, all that stuff. Um, but then also, you know, partners with other, other photographers, pays them, et cetera. She's, she's one of the good ones. Um, but what is your, what's your tip for growing, uh, you know, for photographers, video creators, the people who already know how to create content, but maybe yeah. don't, don't already have, you know, when I say influence, I don't mean a K next to your name. I mean, right. you know, hey, maybe you're getting a client from Instagram or you're getting a client from a social channel. Like, yeah, what's kind of your strategy right now? Not to to pull under the rug or show what's under the rug, but like what's yeah. what's Kent's, you know, like biggest strategy or biggest, you know, tip that you can give for people like that? All right. Well, the number one thing I'm going to say, um, and this is like it seems so obvious, but it's just so hard to hear it, I think. Um my biggest tip for any social media is collaborate. Mm. I think everyone is so afraid of it. I see, especially like a lot of my photographer friends and everyone feels really hands over their paper because they just, it, 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 it makes sense. You're like afraid of other people coming in and having a different message than you or having a different vibe or taking your clients or this or that or whatever. There's so many excuses, but what's like the number one way to get more people to see your stuff It's like a shout out, for example, like just your content being put in front of other people. Mm. So why not make a friend who's of the same size or whatever and work together, create things together. If you do that, it just behooves the both of you and you both grow. Like it's beneficial for both. The like original social media growth technique came from YouTube, which is just where people would collab, where two influencers, two content creators would get together and they would make two videos. They would post it at the same time on their YouTube channels and they both would grow because you know, person one's followers would come over to person two and person two followers would come over to person one or YouTube would start recommending their videos. Cause it'd be like a lot of people are watching both of these videos at the same time or mm. together. This is good content. And the platform still recognize stuff like that because at the end of the day, you can pay for an ad, but it's still not going to be seen as, as, as many people have like someone just posts you on their story or is like, Hey, I'm here with blank or today I'm doing this with blank. Like a podcast is perfect because Two people can come together, collaborate. They both share about the story. They both tell a story. You really can get their vibe and you like feel something. And that's really exciting. That's special. That's something that is unique to the internet. But the best way to grow is to just work with someone. Don't be afraid to make friends, like work together. It's again, it seems so easy, but it gets lost. I think people really want to be like I said, hands over their paper. And I, that's not right. Mm, Yeah, no, it makes sense. Cause I mean, One, Instagram seems public, but obviously the thinking behind whatever, you know, anybody's strategy, if they have Mm -hmm. one, is like not something you necessarily want to want to show people. Again, it's like hands over paper. But yeah, the collaboration. Yeah, I think there's opportunity there. Like things I'm thinking of, too, is just, um, you know, say for me, I'm obviously primarily a wedding photographer. It's like, hey, partner with other wedding vendors. So whether that's florists or venues or whatever, um, you know, and vice versa. Like it's similar. I always tell people, too, when I'm doing... um, SEO consulting, it's like, hey, wedding vendors, you need to do guest blogs on, you know, for the other person. Yeah. And I, I, it's going to take you a day, like write a little content, you know, have them source their photos, etc. And whatever's going to serve that audience best, you know. And so for photographers talking to florists, it's like, hey, here's how flowers look in pictures or whatever. And then for florists, it's like, hey, how do you choose the right flowers for you or, you know, something that's going to serve them. Exactly. And, um, a lot of people don't think about that and I don't know. Yeah. I, I love that your first answer was collaborate. It's not like, Hey, yeah. so something I'm loving is like the Instagram story, you know, swipe up or whatever. Uh, 
So that's really cool. Something I yeah. realized the other day, we did a like best of 18, best of 2018 um, slideshow. I just made like a simple slideshow with music uh, mm-hmm. and, and I put it on IGTV. And um, although I'm not verified or have a thousand, 10,000 followers, I can swipe up to my IGTV content. Correct. And, and so I'm literally thinking of like, oh, I'm going to do like monthly recaps of all my images uh, in IGTV and swipe mm-hmm. up to that just to, to get more eyes on content, you know, and like if they, people exactly. want to, people want to stay, stay in the app. I'm like, <laughs> all right, this is kind of my, that's my, there you go. Listeners. That's your tip of the day right there. That's my, there you go. yeah. <laughs> well, and then there's like some more like cool, fun, analytical stuff, like brighter colors always do better. Sticking true to like your story is really important. Mm-hmm. Um, there's all kinds of just like tiny little tips to, I see like, um, you know, I love people that use like a capital word in their first sentence just cause it, it just draws your eyes to something. Right. Um, colorful emojis are a really great idea. It's just like simple things you pick up from all over the place. Like one of my favorite content creators has nothing to do with anything that I'll ever create on the internet, but he's a, he's a genius because he like talks about how getting clicks starts from the very first thing you do. Every post should be thought out. Everything should be thoughtful. Yeah. If you're going to post something, why? Why are you trying to grow followers? Are you trying to get a new client? Are you trying to build engagement? Like, are you trying to get comments? Think about what that reason is and then what exactly you can do for that exact thing. The content mm-hmm. creator I'm talking about is Mr. Beast, by the way. Have you ever seen this guy? No, no. Oh my God. He does the most insane things. He'll like, he built a house out of Legos and he like one time filled someone's house with Orbeez, those little like little beads things. And he just does these insane things, but he gets more views than anyone on YouTube right now. Like he's got a couple million subscribers, but he gets like 25 million views a video. Like that's the kind of content creator he is. And that's how smart he is. Dang. So it's just, it's just fascinating. That is crazy. And he's just like, intentionality. It's just a fun content creator. I love that. Exactly. Right. There's no education. There's no anything. It's just like, I'm here to be fun and entertaining and make people smile. And he just kind of figured out the ultimate formula to do that. Right. No, exactly. I love that. It's that's the big thing too. It's just in your brand in general, like not just on social, it's like, Hey, just be true to who you are. Like right. one of the things that's going around right now in the photography community is like photographers saying like, I love the wispy hair and the sun shining and all this stuff. And one, if they talk like that, then we're like, Hey, cool. But if you don't talk like that, if you don't talk like you're a philosopher of love or something like that, then just, <laughs> then just be you, you know, like just be exactly. Be oh my cool. gosh. That's so true. Yeah. Like I want my brand right now for me, of like redoing my site and I want my brand to just be like, I hate Pinterest, you know, or something like that. I just, <laughs> I, like I want my brand to be the opposite of what people are thinking. And right. it's, um, but that's how I speak and that's how I talk. And that's like authentic to me. And, and one, it helps eliminate imposter syndrome because I'll never have to be somebody else. I'll just be no. me. And it's like, no, I really do hate Pinterest or, you know, whatever your feelings are about things. And, right. but people, we see success and then we attach onto it and we're like, oh, it's like those fish that ride on sharks' bellies and they oh, like, yes. they see a shark and they're like, oh, I want to be a shark. And you can ride on the shark, but you never, you're not the shark. Just be you, no, like exactly. whatever you are. That's, and such like, a, that's such a wonderful analogy of that. I love it. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's like people, they, I I get all these emails and they're like, yeah, it's always like imposter syndrome and fear that's stopping them from doing something. I know this we're we're talking about social media, but it's like, just be you. Like the reason I used to think that because I was overweight, I couldn't post on social media. Like, this is a really stupid thing. But then like my buddy, Tyler McCall, like homeboy is killing it. And he's so cute and adorable on social media all the Mm -hmm. time. So I'm like, if he could do it, I could do it. And it's, it's stupid stuff that like we get in our own heads about yeah. and you know, that's kind of like the flip side of why we're creating this post. Like we want to have intentionality in there. And at the same time, like you should never question yourself, you know, no. on social media, at least like while you're thinking about it. And yeah, I don't know. It's one of the trying to keep things lighter is like one of the tips that I love is like you said, is like putting some emoji in the first line. Cause you have to stop people from scrolling. Like that's the oh, main, yeah. oh, main yeah. deal. Yeah, like I have a, I have one photo that anytime I post it, it always gets tons of traction, uh, and it's a photo of a groom grabbing his wife's butt, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know, and it's so just random, weird. No, uh, there's no special like photography. I mean, it's pretty, but it's not you know anything fancy. Right. And uh, like Peter McKinnon's not going to call me and ask for a collab or anything like that. <laughs> um, but it, uh, people like that, and obviously the the audience that I already have, you know, no matter what the size is, they're obviously into like couples being themselves, and so. Right. It's like, quote unquote, very on brand. Um, I'm not going to say I like 
butt grabbing on my site because that's too bold for me. But <laughs> uh, that's just not my thing. <laughs> fair, uh, fair. Yeah, no, I love that, man. I love that. I, I, I want to encourage people to collaborate more. And I'm already thinking of other ideas to just photographers and video content creators. You know, the one thing I've always talked about for people who are just like looking for clients in general is like, go make stuff for free. Like mm-hmm. d- don't, don't charge them a little bit. Like just do it for free. Like go find fitness people. They always want photos of themselves looking jacked. Like exactly. Go- oh my gosh. Yes, exactly. Right. Like go find chefs and take photos of their meals and maybe they'll even give you a free meal. Like I'm doing a gig for a donut shop here in DC and they sponsored our company party. And mm-hmm. like they're, I'm going to, you know, we're planning to shoot and they're like, Hey dude, Obviously, they're going to be making fresh donuts. Eat as many of them as you want. And I'm like, oh, oh no. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'll have can you hang on. Yeah, you can assist <laughs> on that shoot. Yeah, I'll be like, uh, Kent is the taste tester. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So it's oh, just yeah. like people, I, yeah, there's something just about like having action and going for it. And to, you know, I, I think you know this as well. Something I've learned is like, let's say I, I post something and let's say I did think about it and I thought about the why and I thought about, okay, content looks like this caption looks like this and maybe it flops maybe it doesn't feel right mm, yeah. and a lot of people were like oh what should i do well just experiment like put it on the same caption and different photo content or like just try something like that's it's your own channel and you have the freedom to run it how you want you know exactly and i feel like the the freedom to be creative as well like that's the point that's what makes you different my favorite collab that i ever saw was two photographers pointed a camera at each other and they posted the opposite photo so it was like the photo of the other person and they're like go to the other person's page to see the photo that they took of me in this exact moment or mm. two youtubers you had to play both their videos at the same time to see both of the content and it made you fall in love with both people what like, how creative can you be to like share because god forbid we both grow on social media like mm. that's just the worst ever i can only imagine so right it's just allowing yourself to be creative and not having to stick to this like mold that you see everyone else doing because for them it might be working but there can only be so many pure white wedding dress yeah. influencers yeah. you know who 100%. love positivity and i'm really not <laughs> trying to bash anyone like i love all my people but, sure. like there can only be so many like we can't yeah. have too many of those and i would argue there already are too many so how can you differentiate how can you bring something new to the table and that was like what i always talked about with natalie and i was always talked about with all my influencer friends is like how can you be different? One of my biggest streamer friends, like one of my biggest streamer clients, literally the biggest streamer on the entire platform. Now I was just like, own your difference, own what makes you special, be good at the video game and like share your message. Don't care about what other people want from you or what other streamers do that you feel like you have to do own your thing, be you. And that's what worked. And now he is literally the biggest on the whole platform. That is insane, dude. That's awesome. Yeah, Yeah. It's people. I always tell people like, you only uh the market's only saturated when you're trying to be like everybody else you know like like yeah the market for photographers that shoot you know a certain style might be saturated but it's not saturated over here you know or over there like do your own thing like yeah it's it's um i don't know it's there's people just need to be themselves and relax and that's the main key to like making social media work um like my whole thing has been organic and you obviously i'm not verified i don't have a k but like 40 percent of my business comes from instagram and it's doing great and like we're engaging with couples people follow it and my best clients my the clients that most understand me are from instagram and they're like adam i've been following you for a year just waiting for my boy to pop the question i'm like all right girl (laughs) let's roll let's get in the car let's 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 do this uh get in the hummer that i have just kidding i don't have a hummer but i want one um (laughs) I want a Hummer and a Tesla. I want like the best of saving the world and the worst. And then the worst at the same time. Oh, I love that. That's yeah. like a really wonderful paradox. Yeah. I'm a man of extremes, you know, like it's, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it is what it is. <laughs> it's either I, I pizza night that. or a salad night. You know, there's no in between. Love it. Yeah. Awesome, man. So tell me, you know, what is, what's next for you now, man? You're, you're trying to rebuild, trying to focus. Like, is there anything tangible you could tell us that you're like, all right, this is one thing I know that I think I want to do, or are yeah. you not sure yet? Definitely. Well, I'm really focusing on long form content right now. Um, I see some really success. I see one really successful person in that vein, but nobody else. Mm. Like the internet, I think. Is that really, a podcasting or other media? No, it's going to be video, video okay. long form. So I think everyone at night sits down and watches a 45 minute Netflix episode. But when they watch YouTube, they only are allowing themselves like a 15 minute this or a 10 minute that or a five minute this or whatever. And I was like, let me 
I wouldn't try. What, what could I give to that space that like isn't there already? And so I'm really focusing on that right now and then really project based things. So like last week I wrote a book in a whole, in one week, it's called social media for moms. It was like a, a ton of fun to just learn how to write a book and publish it on Amazon. And I got it on Amazon by the end of the week. Like I wrote it in the beginning, got it on Amazon by the end. And then that was the whole movie. It was like a 35 minute movie about mm. how I did it. I go into every step. I break down every bit of detail, how I'm going to price it, how I'm going to do this, how I'm going to do that and shared that story. And people loved it. And it was a ton of fun. And then this week I like was like, I'm going to learn how to code a website, but I'm going to tell that in a long form way. It doesn't need to be this like, dot, 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 and you actually don't understand anything about it because the YouTube tutorial space is so saturated but no one's really teaching anything. When someone's like DIY building a house, you're like, I can't build a house. This isn't a DIY. I'm just watching you build a house. Like <laughs> the tutorial space is so weird. But I was like, if I allow a long form tutorial to happen where I can be like, hey, for coding, this is how you do this exact bit and do it in a fun and creative way that still lets you feel emotion and lets you smile with it because it's a fun way of explaining something and make learning exciting again. I was like, let me just give it a go. So I'm like taking a month or two to like, just try and experiment with that. And I'm enjoying it. Like long form content is really fun. I love that. That's so fascinating. I literally just thought of this, like, this is not cool at all. This is not as cool as learning to code a website or make a book. I was like, what if somebody did long form content on people learning like skill, kind of life skills that I would say they're like secondary, but they're mm -hmm. still common. So like, you know, obviously people learn how to drive, but like a secondary would be learning to drive stick, you know, mm -hmm. or like yep. le learning to bake, but now, hey, learning to cook or something like that. I don't know. That's like, that's kind of cool. I love that idea, man. Yeah. And you know, I'm just, I'm allowing myself to really experiment. I'm trying everything. I'm like trying to take lists of ideas of different things I could do. And at the same time, like learn how to make videos. I think the coolest thing about how I make videos is no one ever taught me how to do it. In my college classes, the photography and videography professor retired the year that I got there. So I never took a college course on how to make videos in high school. Obviously, they're not going to teach me that. So everything I know is from watching other YouTubers and experimenting myself. And so bringing that like unique style to something, you just watch my content. I want you to be like, what is happening? <laughs> like, this is so different. This is so new. This is something I've never seen before. And that's like my whole intention is to just be different and embrace that. I think that's cool. I love it, man. I love it. So where can people go to find you if they wanted to find you and say, yes. Hey, so I came up with this really incredibly brilliant genius, um, unheard of spectacular evolution of my social content. So you may know the old Kent, the old Kent Tristing, the verified Kent Tristing. He was this guy, he did all this, you know, internet stuff. Um, but the new Kent, the, the, the new guy, Kent Tristing two, <laughs> everything you can find me is Kentristing too. No Instagram or Facebook yet, but Twitter Kentristing too, YouTube Kentristing too, and Patreon. I'm developing a crowdfunded internet community of people who like want to support my content and that's patreon.com slash Kentristing too. And I'm like really interacting with these people and giving special content and just enjoying making almost friends, really close friends to the internet. And that's just really special for me. So that's like, that's my focus right now. I love it, man. I love it. Thank you so much for being on, man. It was a pleasure Absolutely. to hear your story. And I'm sorry about everything that happened, but it sounds like oh. it's going to be a, a good year and we're going to make things happen, man. Exactly. Don't be sorry. It's it's an exciting opportunity for me to get going. I'm only 22. So God forbid I change my life when I'm young enough to do anything I want. So totally. I mean, Taylor Blessing. Swift had already done so much at 22. You've got plenty of time left. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much, man. Cool, man. Thank you so much for having me. Talk soon. And that's how it's done, everybody. We had Kentristing on there aka Kentristing 2 and yeah man love his story love the kind of like fall from social media if you will you know it would, the worst part is that he was like taking a mental break for it as well and then just lost it all which is so lame I'm so sad but it seems like he is about to build it back up and help people out he's got great advice great tips uh, I would highly suggest joining his Patreon just so you can kind of like get an insider scoop to helping your social media. He's he's the man. I absolutely love him. Speaking of social media, if we were going to just have a social media episode, we do have a Bearded Tog Instagram channel that will not annoy you, but provide you value. So it's just at the Bearded Tog. We would love for you to follow us over there. Link is in the show notes. Come say hi on Instagram and let me know that you listened to this episode and what you thought of Ken. Thank you guys so much. Keep being awesome.
Happy Wednesday, everybody. This is the greatest episode of all time. I'm kidding. It's, it's pretty good. It's obviously pretty good. 